Hey, Bobby here with Coder Foundry. And one of the things I'm really excited about is minimal API development with C Sharp coming out in 2025. Specifically, I'm really excited about the .NET 10 release because for the first time, I think minimal APIs will be on par with something like MVC controllers if you're coming from that. And no longer you have to make the choice between which one do I want to use based on the features that I need. In fact, minimal API model validation is probably the last big feature that we need to where there's really not a decision between which way we should go. We should probably take mental APIs going forward. Now, if you want to learn more about model validation, I made a video you can probably see up there, a link, and learn more about that. But, this, but in this video, I want to talk about the reasons why a lot of people don't want to use mental APIs. APIs because they look at samples they see online and all of the code exists inside the program CS and they figure, well, my needs are a little bit more complex. I have a lot more patterns maybe I want to follow or this doesn't look like controllers. So I want to put all my code in one file. We can't really do that. Our needs are more complex. And so they assume that minimal APIs are only made for like small projects or things with one or two endpoints. Well, I want to show you today how we can follow a patterns based way with minimal API so we can make something that looks like a controller or even more complex problems or patterns like the Reaper pattern. I'll show you how we could also do that with minimal APIs. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So this is the app that um, you can get. I have a link in the description below. You can go get the GitHub repo, clone it and look at it. And you can see I've got a couple of endpoints here. I've got customer products and orders and all of these are just basic what you get gets here and test request and pull it back. And so let's talk about how this is built. So let's stop this and I'm inside Visual Studio, Visual Studio 2022 preview and I am running .NET 10 for this. So you will need that to run this sample mainly because I'm using model validation right here. And this is a .NET 10 and above thing here. You could remove this line here and it would probably run a .NET 9. But just go get the preview and down at 10, you should be fine. So in here, you can see I've got these endpoints here for customer. And you can see right here in the program CS, I've got this map get here. And this returns a list of customers. And if you scroll down through here, I've got a lot of code in here. And this code's even simpler than it would be in reality is because I'm actually using a service here to hide some of my business logic here. And if I didn't have that and actually had the code in here, these would even get even longer and we don't want that. And so people look at this and go, you know, that's too much to manage in one file. You can't really make a really large enterprise project this way. And they're right. But that doesn't mean you can't do it with mental APIs. Cause if you come down here and you can see I've written an extension method for the product endpoints here, and I'm grouping these under one method here. So I'm going to show you how we could, get all of these customer endpoints into an extension method, group them up and have one line of code that registers those endpoints inside of program CS, and then show you how it can follow any pattern that you want. Um, we're gonna show you how to do that a controller based way and also the Reaper way. So let's get started. But before we do that, I'd like to talk to you about learn.coderfounder.com. This is our new content we have out now for complete blazer from beginner to pro. And this is really for aspiring developers. Also, if you're trying to switch stacks, you come from MVC or some other types of programs and you need to learn Blazor, this is the perfect course for you. And then when you're done, you can also take our world famous bug tracker program as well. So that'll be an add on or a capstone to this program or this course as well. And we also have a couple of competitive pricing programs. You can buy this one time purchase. It's yours used forever or you can subscribe completely to the platform to get all of our content. And so that's at learn.coderfoundry.com. Check it out. So what we want to do is create a method that will group all of these endpoints here that we've created for the customer object and create it into one extension method that we can call like this one. So this says map product endpoints. We want to make one that we can map the customer endpoints and we'll show you how easy that is to do so that we can mimic maybe a controller pattern with it and show you how it's a little bit more maintainable, easier to work on if it's in another file, not everything is inside the program CS. So let's get to work and do that. So the first thing I'm gonna do in my project, I like to create a folder called endpoints and I'm gonna add a new class here and this is gonna be called customer endpoints. Now this is entity based here where we're working on the customer. This could be a feature, it could be 
an area, however you want to look at it. But it's just a group of endpoints that you want to group under one route. And so this does have to be a static class. And then here we're going to write our grouping method here, our extension method. And it has to implement the endpoint route builder um, interface. And we'll say map customer endpoints. That's the name of our method that we're going to call. And in here, the first thing you do is create a group, okay, and give it a route. And then I'm going to say with tags here. And I'll get rid of this. And so what this does is create our base route here. And this is what you normally would see in a, co a customer in like a controller file. You'd see the customer route here. And this is the base or root route that all of the endpoints are going to kind of tag off of. And so what we want to do is after we have a group, we can now create an endpoint. And um, we'll have to add in, in our case here, the using for the results and a using for our models and then a using for our service here. All right. So we've got this one method that will call our service here. Now, one thing you can notice here is that um, for each endpoint, um, you can get things out of the DI container. So injection works. And you see I'm injecting this customer service into this route. One difference between, say, a controller is that all your injection happens at the definition of the controller file. Well, this happens at each individual route. You inject what you need. And then here, we're calling the service here to return our results. And we have our typed out response here. So this is a strongly typed function. And then here produces with name, summary, and description. This is for our documentation. Okay, so for our scalar documentation I showed you earlier, this is what produces that. So while this is good, if this gets complex, this can get a little hard to read too. So we can take it one step further and make this a little bit, I think, more maintainable, easier to read. And we can create a method that we can call. So I'm going to put a method in here. And this is we'll call get customers, and then we'll call our service. And then instead of putting all of the implementation in here, we'll do something like this. And we'll say get customers. And now we just define the definition of the route right here. This is the route that gets tacked onto this root route here. And this is the method that's called when the user navigates to that. And this is all the description for our open API documentation. And then it calls down here. And you can see here now we have all of this kind of like syntax here to create the method, the return type, and the injection happens right here at the method. Okay. So all of that works. And that's pretty cool. So now what we can do, since we've written this, we can come back over here and we can, we're going to take all of this code out of here. So I'm going to take all of this code out. Actually, I'll just comment it out. So this is all commented out here. We'll close this region down. And now what I can do is I can say map customer endpoints. And if we run this, we'll have one endpoint now instead of all of them. And you can see now it's no longer included in our program CS. I'm here and you see I got my get customers here and with my documentation, the name, that's my description. I can test a request. Boom. Okay. And like I said before, that this sample is completely written for you. The descriptions below, you can go grab it and look at it at your leisure and everything you need is in there. In fact, all of the data and everything is pre-configured for you. So you can just run it, the sample, and it'll create the SQL light for you and everything. All right. So what else could we do? Well, we'll show you how easy it is to enhance this now. So now you can see here, I've got this endpoint, which defined my routes, and then all of the methods are down here. So if we took all of the methods that we want to write and put them down here, and this is beginning to look a lot like a controller. This is what you're used to seeing is all of the methods down here. And now what we need to do is just define all of the routes.
And this looks more like you're used to seeing if you've seen a controller. We have our route definition here and then the implementation of each route in here. Now we call this a handler. We're handling this route. This is the method that we're calling and we're putting them all in the same file, which is the way controllers work. So if we run this one more time, you'll see that now all of our endpoints automatically get included because that one method runs, registers all our endpoints. And now you can see in here, we have all of them here. So it's kind of cool. All right. So you get customer right here. Now the thing with our OpenAI documentation is kind of cool. It shows the models that are coming back and each endpoint is documented. It makes a really cool test torrents here for your open APIs. All right, well, what else could we do? You, just, you could say, well, Bobby, I, I don't really like the controller way to do this is we use more complex patterns. Let me show you the Reaper pattern and how you could do that. And so it's kind of similar actually. So the one thing I want you to take away is we just got to write this extension method here and register it in the program CS and we're good. But if you want to do the Reaper pattern, look at this. I have a folder right here called orders. And this is my folder for the entity or the feature or whatever, how you want to group them is up to you. And I gave it a name and then it has inside of here, it has this order endpoints. And in here, all I did was define the routes. Okay. And made sure my documentation is in order. And I just define the routes and return the group. So when I call map order endpoints, it goes through here and registers them all. And in here, I'm calling a method called handle. And this is where we, we coined the name. Maybe we did, or maybe other people did the word handler. And we're going to write a handler method for this endpoint. And if you look in it for each one, we have a request model, we have a response model, and we have a handler. Okay. So if we look at this create one here, the create one, this demonstrates kind of everything. See here, I have a create order handler and it's just some C-sharp code that I wrote. I wrote a method that returns an order result. So everything has a response and everything has a request. And you can see here, I've got this application DB context is being injected in. And then I also have my request being pushed in. And then I just write my code right to the database, right to the entity. This could also call a repository pattern or some other service or whatever you want to do. This is just a standard C-sharp method that we're calling from our extension method. All right. So you write this code and it's all one file handles one endpoint. And then in here you have your request object and you also have your response object. And that's kind of the Reaper pattern. All right. Now you may have a more complex way of doing this or more or less complex way to do it. But what you, what you need to understand is once you write this extension method here, define your routes, you can do whatever you want at that point. You're just calling a method, wherever that method is located and how you want to structure it, how, what forward you want to put in is up to you. And we're not advocating one pattern over another because they all have their plus and minuses. It's, to educate you that you can write this with any pattern that you want. All right. So the main question a lot of people ask, okay, that's great. Why would I pick minimal APIs over like MVC controllers or fast endpoints? Um, mainly this is the way forward from Microsoft, but also minimal APIs are way more performant than controllers because it is opt-in by nature, which means that you only bring in the things that you need. And if you do that, it's going to always be more performant than a controller most, in most cases. All right. So go grab the repo. Go check it out. Look at the code. There's a lot of other things in here that we're doing. You can check out how we're doing migrations in here. Um, you can also look at how I did the data utility in here to mock up the data. It's up to you. There's a lot of things in this project here. Um, that goes well beyond just creating the Reaper pattern and the controller-based pattern for endpoints. There's a lot to learn in here. Go check it out. Also, give us a like, a subscribe, and smash the buttons down below and so you can see more of our future great content. I hope this helps. Good luck and keep coding.